Construction stops, mortgage stops. Deliver homes and get repaid. This was one of the many chants by frustrated home buyers in China at a protest earlier this year. However, chants and protesting with signs weren't the only way these buyers showed their discontent. Several hundreds of them refused to pay back their mortgages. This is unheard of in China, where the population is known for complete compliance. A very radical move for China, where dissent is met with brutal crackdowns. We're witnessing China's property market nosediving at full speed. What does this mean for the rest of the world and the economy? Investors and economic experts all around are shocked to see China, a country debated not whether but when it would surpass the US as the world's largest economy, is now the talk of economic collapse. As an analyst by Bloomberg states, data for July suggests confidence is collapsing among China's businesses and households. Over the past several years, China's economy has evolved rapidly, from a slow-growing, emerging nation to a lightning-speed economic powerhouse. But although China's juggernaut of an economy hasn't faltered just yet, it is also facing much more stress to the system than just the housing market controversy. Red flags are popping up on many fronts. China's zero-COVID policy is taking a toll on the social and economic outlook. There's a deepening sense of uncertainty in the economy, causing a dip in consumption and investment, especially when the population isn't allowed to leave their homes. Not only that, but rising income equality and a lack of jobs for university graduates are running rampant. New data released by China's National Bureau of Statistics shows that youth unemployment hit 19.3% earlier this year. That's the highest seen since China first made these figures public. The troubles for the Chinese government don't stop there. Ominous demographic milestones reveal that its population has begun to shrink. China is facing short-term and long-term challenges if that issue cannot be addressed. It's looking to be that China will almost certainly miss its target of 5.5 GDP for 2022. In fact, it might not come anywhere close to that target. So let's dive in and see how this housing economic freefall is causing so many woes for China and the rest of the world. Severe property crisis. Homeowners are refusing to pay their mortgages. I have imagined countless times the joy of living in a new home. But now it all feels ridiculous. These are the words of a woman who did not wish to be named. The woman and her spouse moved to Zhengzhou in central China and began making down payments to a developer who withdrew from the project and stalled construction. According to the BBC, another woman in her late 20s who bought a home is also ready to stop paying her mortgage. After the project is fully resumed, I'll continue paying. It's not uncommon for potential homeowners to start paying a mortgage before their home begins construction. Actually, it's the norm. In China, home developers run an operation that uses the present homebuyer's payments to finish construction on the previous year's contracts. This system works out just fine when the economy is booming, and many investors and homeowners are lined up to pay. But when the economy stalled, it was more like a Ponzi scheme than anything else. According to the S&P Global Rating Estimates, the boycotted loans in China are mounting up as high as $145 billion, a number that some analysts are forecasting to jump even higher. The authorities in China have never seen such protests take place in their country. This revolt has added pressure on a slowing market with a severe cash crunch. According to an Oxford economics think tank, mortgage boycotts driven by deteriorating sentiment toward property are a very serious threat to the financial position of the sector. With a severe contraction of the property market on the horizon, the Chinese government now needs to interfere with curbing speculation and reining in on the three highs high prices, high debt, and high financialization. Just to give an example of how bad things are getting, property sales declined as much as 20-30% to 30 earlier this year. Financing for property developers has tanked. Developments are not being completed, and the population is banding together to protest and stop mortgage payments. Some of China's largest property developers, such as Shanghai-based real estate developer Shermao Group, have failed to repay their debts. Even the property developers staying above the water are cash-strapped and in a liquidity crisis. The Chinese government is worried that the property market crisis will bring down the rest of the economy, including construction, household consumption, and suppliers. So why are financial experts raising the danger zone alarm in China? Well, that's because the banking system has at least a quarter of its assets tied into property development. Why should you worry about China's property crisis? About a third of China's economic output revolves around the property sector. That includes rental services, brokering, and houses. All industries that lead to the production of goods that go into apartments and construction materials. So what's causing financing to dry up? The answer to that question has to do with the belief that property developers won't have the cash to pay back debts, causing buyers and investors to hold off on their purchases. That's why China is proposing a bailout package. 
but many experts argue that that won't be enough to ease the mortgage market. Stimulating demand by loosening mortgage lending won't solve the problem. The government needs to offer much more relief to property developers who have been caught acting in dishonest practices that have led to the crisis in the first place. The Chinese government will need to work much more aggressively to demonstrate action and instill confidence in investors. Another factor that accelerated unsustainable development practices was the rapid urbanization in China. New residents were flocking to the cities with dreams of owning a home in a highly competitive market. Owning a home in a gender-skewed country like China also gives you a competitive edge in the marriage market. These wide-reaching effects mean a slowdown in China's housing market, potentially leading to a spike in unemployment a drop in Chinese stocks, and deflation. This would then spread through global trade sectors as China cut its goods purchases from other countries. That would mean a big hit on Wall Street and even further dips in investment. People are starting to hold on to their money in uncertain times in the United States, and rising global tensions are adding even more of a strain on the world scale of the economy. How did we get here? Real estate in China accounts for about 70% of personal wealth, and home buyers in China often pay up front on projects yet to even begin development. These pre-sales total up to 70-80% to of new home sales in China. That money is essential for developers because they use that money paid up front to fund multiple projects at once. The problem is that many young and middle class Chinese are no longer investing in property when many are losing their jobs. Pay cuts in the workplace and a weakening economy is shaking confidence. Now, on top of all of that, there is fear that the developers might not complete the promised projects. Real estate developers were counting on new money, but those sales are not happening anymore. More than $220 billion worth of loans are tied up to unfinished projects, according to ANZ Banking Group. That was a significant source of cash when the economy was booming. So, what's the most significant factor in all of this? In 2020, China's government introduced the three red lines. Those red lines were accounting measures to limit how much developers could borrow. That cut-off funding and lack of confidence in the market have also made banks unwilling to lend to property companies. So what happens next? Experts say that the Chinese government bailout for the real estate developers may not be enough. The reported $148 billion bailout money barely takes a bite out of the $444 billion needed to complete the halted projects. Even if construction resumes, many developers may not survive because house sales continue to drop. Sales in China's top 100 developers dropped by nearly 40% in July of this year compared to the year before. China's economy is at a crossroads. The government is doing its best to discover new sources of growth. Still, they find it very difficult when so much of the economy is tied and dependent on property, infrastructure investments, and exports. The era of China's accelerated growth in their economy is now at an end. The collapse in confidence in the property sector is leading to a potential housing market bust. If the world's second largest economy is in this kind of trouble, you can be sure that so are we.